Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to encourage you guys today and share with you my recent published article over at Harbinger's Daily. What I'm going to do in the description box below, I'm going to put um, the link to the author section uh, of Har Harbinger's Daily. All you're going to have to do is click on it and you'll be able to find all of my articles that have been published on there. But each time I have an article published, I love to actually come to you guys and read it with you. But I believe the last article that was just published, I believe this is going to encourage you guys greatly. Again, go to harbingersdaily.com and I'll put the link in the description box. Uh, you'll just click on it and it'll take you to my author page so you can scroll through all my articles that are on there. But I believe that they, each and every one of them will encourage you guys. But especially the one that was just published, I think that this will encourage a lot of you guys. And it's uh, right here on the screen. Uh, the article is titled, How to Finish Strong in Distressing Times. So let's read through it together. Let's face facts. We live in a fallen world. People are hurting. People are depressed. Suicide, alcohol, alcoholism, excuse me, and drug addiction rates are at an all-time high. When I look at these horrifying statistics, it does not surprise me. People are turning to all the wrong places to deal with every day's life, trials, tribulations, and storms. People are turning to alcohol, drugs, sex, money, and many other things to try to fill that void in their hearts. The problem is those things may produce temporary happiness, but it leads to permanent destruction in the long run. Romans chapter 6, verse 21, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. God has given us the formula in his holy word, the Bible, on how we can have peace through life storms. And it is not through worldly methods. It is found only through Jesus Christ. Of course, this does not mean Christians are exempt from life's trials. In fact, Jesus tells us we will experience hardships. John 16, 33, King James Version, we read the following. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus never said following him was going to be easy. He only said that it would be worth it. Romans chapter 8 verse 18, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is weighing you down right now? I know many of you are going through many hardships as we speak, whether it's financial, family-related, re family physical illness, or something else. The good news is if you feel like you are sinking, Jesus can lift you up right here and right now. The more we get caught up in the affairs of this life and take our eyes off of heaven, the more we begin to feel like we are sinking. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, King James Version, the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Christian life is a race, and we need to make sure we utilize the tools that God has given us so we can finish this race strong. If you feel like you are sinking right now, I want to go through a section of scripture that I believe will help you. 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 24 to 25, and 28 to 31, King James Version. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be though, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? This portion of, of scripture is incredibly powerful. Jesus was walking on the sea, and his disciples were afraid. When Peter began to walk on the water toward Jesus, he took his eyes off of the Savior and began to focus on the winds and the waves crashing around him. As soon as he took his eyes off of the Son of God, he began to sink. As he was sinking, he cried out, Lord, save me. Christ immediately reached down and picked Peter back up. How does this apply to us? Well, there is, this, there is a major implication. We are all walking on water. This valley of life is the water, and the trials and tribulations we are all going through are the winds and the waves crashing all around us. When we focus on those things and take our eyes off of Jesus, we begin to sink. When we feel like we are sinking, it is incredible that we can cry out to Jesus, and he will immediately lift us and fill us with his peace, which passeth all understanding. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, King James Version, the Apostle, the Apostle Paul says the following, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The finish line is in sight. Jesus is coming soon, but none of us are promised tomorrow. We can breathe our last breath at any time. We must strive to finish this race strong, as Paul did. In 2 Timothy 4, 7-8, King James Version, the Apostle Paul records, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let's keep fighting the good fight. It all comes down to keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. The winds, waves, and storms will come and crash all around us. It's going to continue to happen, folks. But we must not allow the devil to make us feel shaken. We may fall, but we will rise back up. Eyes up, saints. The day draweth nigh. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, King James Version we read the following. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I pray this article has blessed many of you and it's encouraged many of you. I needed the encouragement. All right? Again, this will all be in the description box. Go check it out. Share it with others because we're to encourage one another. And so much the more as we see the day approaching. And make no, no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. God bless you all. I pray you have a great weekend. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly, one day very soon, sooner than many of us even realize. Keep watching with me. God bless you all.